Well, hello friends. We are in the south of Armenia. I'm currently in the small city of Goris. It has a population of about 20,000 people. And this is kind of the gateway to a lot of major attractions here in this area. So where we will be going today is definitely one of the top things you have to see if you come to Armenia, which is the Tatev Monastery. And how we get there is the longest ropeway <laughs> in the Guinness World Book of Records. It's a little bit overcast today. I'm really hoping it doesn't rain, but it's basically been like this every single day. So we got to make it happen. <laughs> This is going to be so epic, you guys. We are just at the bottom of the cable car right now. I'm going on the first ride of the day. I got here as early as possible because apparently it does get busy throughout the day. And this is going to be epic because this is the longest reversible cable car in the world. It's about a loop of six kilometers and it takes 12 minutes to get from one end to the other. This is actually the fastest way to get to Tetev Monastery because if you were to drive all the way there, it would take about 40 minutes. So you're basically getting there in a third of the time. You're 320 meters above ground. So I am super excited to see how this goes. <laughs> Wow, 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 you guys, <laughs> this is definitely one of the highlights of my trip here in Armenia so far. And I now understand why so many locals were saying that unless you go to Tatev Monastery, you have not seen Armenia. This is definitely a must for any trip to this country. <laughs> The cable car itself was incredible, 100% worth it. Really smooth ride, to be honest. And you just get the most beautiful vista out here in the mountains. So I'm just walking now to the monastery itself. It is a little ways off from the cable car. And this is a 9th century medieval monastery and fortress. Right now it's actually in the process of being uh, reconstructed. And they were actually saying that through the proceeds of the cable car, that is the main source of income for the reconstruction.
100% certain because there's no signs, but I'm pretty sure that this might have been the area where they held Tetev University because outside of just being a monastery, this complex was very well known for being the stronghold for Armenian culture where all the great minds of the country came to study science, uh, religion, calligraphy, and in the times when Armenia was being attacked by many other nations, this was kind of the stronghold of their own national culture. It's about 1 p.m. right now and I am actually quite hungry so we are near the actual village settlement of Tetev so let's see if we can find a good authentic Armenian restaurant. <laughs> So since I haven't had my morning coffee yet, I decided to start off my meal with this. And allow me to say one <laughs> little negative thing about Armenia that's kind of been difficult for me over this past month. Because you guys know that I'm a very big coffee drinker. I drink a lot of coffee. And in Yerevan it was no problem. In Yerevan you can find all kinds of great cafes, really good uh, Americanos, cappuccinos, no problem. But basically since I've left and have been exploring other parts of the country, it is very hard to come across any place, you know, with an espresso machine. Armenian coffee is nice. I don't mind the taste. It's just not my personal, you know, favorite sort of taste for coffee. So if I have gotten coffee, I have usually uh, chosen to get uh, Armenian coffee or the odd time I get those mixing powdery drinks like mac coffee and that kind of stuff. So first world problems for sure but that is one thing that I am definitely missing and that I am so excited to finally have again in Yerevan. <laughs> the food has arrived and it looks fantastic. I am so excited to dig in but I decided to get a beef kebab because I don't think I have had that in my prior videos and that's something that's super common to eat here in Armenia. I got some roasted potato, I got a cabbage salad with some lavash, some bubbly sort of water, <laughs> and that is my meal. If you guys do ever come to Armenia, just some common dishes to keep in mind that are popular to order are things like a local cheese sort of platter, olives, you can get fresh veggies. The summer salad with just tomato and cucumber is usually the most common that people get. They have different kinds of soups and then for hot dishes it usually is some kind of meat. And then they also have dolma which I've showed you guys before. It's the meat wrapped in grape leaves, super good. This place has a lot of different omelets if you felt up to it. And then barbecue is also super popular in Armenia.
right, friends, I think I'm going to end off the video here as I'm about to get on my cable car back. Today has been absolutely spectacular. This is definitely a highlight of my trip. And while there are so many, so many monasteries in Armenia, I think this one is a must. If you're thinking of coming here for a day trip from Yerevan, I feel like that might be a very long day because it would be about a three, four hour drive each way. So ideally, if you could come stay overnight, have a couple days to explore the area, that would be ideal. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.